So we're just there sitting in the pitch black of Cannock Chase, um, just chatting, just general chit chat. Some of us are sitting on the bonnets of the car, some of us are sitting in the car, one or two of us sitting on the roof and just general messing about. Uh, not long had gone by before what we thought was a shooting star had gone over the top of us. And what, what none of us can explain to this day is there were 30 or so people just stood in the trees. Um, all different ages, uh, there were children, there were teenagers, uh, adults, uh, and they were all dressed in different attire that didn't fit in with where they were. But he sort of stepped forward from the crowd and kind of just said, in a friendly manner, why don't you come over here? Bempton Cliffs, Rendlesham, Cannock Chase, these are a list of some of the most mysterious locations involving cryptozoology in Britain. Although most have heard of Rendlesham and Bempton, few have heard of the grisly tales that spawned from the flora and fauna of Cannock Chase. I'm currently in a part of the Chase called Sussing Mill. From the 1970s, a whole host of accounts came in, with one of the most notable being, with what could only be described as a trio of small, hairy, troll-like creatures. In 1975, a young couple, Barry and Elaine, were returning from a Christmas party in the early hours of the morning with the two children, who at the time were fast asleep at the back of the car. The car stalled, and Barry jumped out to check the engine. While he was returning to the car, his wife screamed as a small figure quickly ran across the road in front of them. She had just about saw them at the last second, and then another one followed, and then a third one. The best way she could describe them was like a trio of hairy trolls or something like that. Some at Pie Green Tower, which was originally built during the Cold War, and is also known as being one of England's biggest UFO hotspots. Now there's been a few strange reports around this location in the past, including it having an account of a pigman-like creature very similar to the Castle Ring area close by, and also sightings of a Slenderman-like entity. The tower stands at a whopping 96 metres in height, and is also built out of reinforced concrete. Standing on the far southern edge of the chase, it is one of the 14 telecommunication towers in the United Kingdom. Pygreen was constructed as part of a British Cold War backbone radio communications network. However, locals claim the tower hides a more sinister story of the mutated kind. According to the local legend, the Pigman originated when World War II had just recently ended, and British and American scientists joined alliances to conduct a series of peculiar experiments. The tests went too far, and allegedly they abducted a woman, hypnotised her, and then impregnated her with an artificial human pig DNA seed in an attempt to create a creature to perform their tests upon. The scientists closely monitored the woman for about 10 months, and they finally determined that the horrible test did not work. A year later, they were stunned to discover that her pregnancy was severely delayed, and she bore a baby human who had the snout and face of a pig. Much later, 
This creature retreated into the woods of Canet Chase to avoid the judgmental glances of human eyes. And for decades, people have since then reported seeing a tall man with the head of a pig roaming about the mysterious landscape. Castle Ring is a Celtic hill fort dating back to 500 BC. Some of its architecture is still visible to this day and look an eerie sight surrounded by the dense woodland. The hill has had a sinister past as the Celtic tribe known as the Cornivai, who used to call it home, are believed to have performed satanic rituals and blood sacrifices on the hill. There has also been sightings of a caveman-like beast that resembles the North American Bigfoot, alongside other reports of an upright canine resembling a werewolf, black-eyed children, and also a pigman. I'm in Hazelslade at the moment, which is an area very close to kind of Chase. In 2004, a very peculiar story emerged from this location of what the witness described as being a very strange canine-like creature. On Friday the 13th of February 2004, Mr Hilton, who worked as a French language interpreter for a very well-known Birmingham-based company, claimed that his 10-year-old daughter was attacked by a snarling, beastly, canine-like creature. Mr Hilton later stated that the creature looked like a huge dog from the waist down, just two hairy legs, but from the waist up until the neck, it looked like a man, a toned one at that. Its head again was wolf-like, I could see its protruding face, long nose, and even the saliving ooze dripping from its big white fangs. On one of the nights, we decided to go out to the German war cemetery to see what we could find, as there has been previous reports in the area of the apparitions of soldiers from the war, and also a werewolf-like creature said to stomp the grounds at night. So we're currently at the German military cemetery at night. So this is going to be our night investigation here at the cemetery. So I have brought my K2 and um, some cat balls um, and we're going to see what we can find. Obviously this area is it's had some weird stuff. It's had the ghosts of soldiers and also um, even stranger, a canine-like creature, which I believe to be a dogman or werewolf possibly. But I guess we'll just have to wait and see and see what we find so obviously as you can see we have these set up um i'll use the cat balls later but for now we've got the k2 out so i think i think the first thing they've always got to ask is is anybody here any lost souls any anyone that would like to communicate with us tonight i know with all these graves here there's been a lot of tragic history with brother and brother killing each other for pretty much no reason so like I said before if there's anyone that would like to communicate and please you can touch this object here with your flashing lights and if you go close to it or even touch it the lights will change from green to yellow to red It seems we're not getting anything. So I'll start asking some questions. Is there anybody here that is perhaps German? I mean, I personally know 
pretty much nothing about the German language, but if there's any Germans here that would like to communicate, then please try and touch this device for it to change colours. But it seems nothing so far, so what I think I might do is get the cat balls out and see if we get anything with them. But so far, the K2, no activity. So I've now added the cat balls. As, as you can see, we've got one there, then two up there. So maybe that'll spice things up, perhaps, but who knows. So we asked before if there's anyone German here, no response. So is there anyone English here? perhaps. I know this is mostly for Germans and Austrians for cemetery, but you never know. It's always worth asking. So, if there is anyone here that would like to communicate, I'll say again. You can either go near this device and the colours will change, or you can touch one of these ball-like objects and they will flash multiple different colours rapidly. Lots of gimmicks that you can try and Basically, just to show that you're here, but who knows? There's one here that despises the war, the war, but thinks it's worthless, like many other people do. Still no response. So we moved to a different area now, which is closer to this tree right here. And there's also clo right. That's that's gone off. I don't think any of the others have, but and it's gone off again. Well, thank you to whoever whoever um, that was. We've got one down there as well. Then we are also close to the tree. No, not tree, sorry, um, the cross, which you can just about see. Well, here's my setup over here. So, there's a cat ball up there. There's one up there. There's one down there. You can just about see it. Then we've also got the K2. So, we'll ask more questions again. If there's anyone here that would like to communicate, then please use this device as a means to respond. You can go near it or even touch it, and the colours here change from green to yellow to red then these cat balls as well if you touch them roll them around they will move and well obviously they'll move but they'll change colors as well so yeah anyone that would like to communicate here Still nothing. What I might try and do is put that touch down there. Move around with the K2. I'll hold it just down there because if you didn't know, you're actually able to manipulate it by pressing that up there. If you move it like that, you can manipulate it to make it look like it's going off. That's why I always hold it there or have it down so it didn't go off on purpose by me doing it. But you can just about see the light, but does anyone want to communicate? Still nothing. Right. None of the cat balls have happened to go off either. Later that same night, we had decided to meet up with another investigation team called Paranormal Apocalypse on YouTube to go and investigate the Birches Valley area of the chase where the black eyed children are supposed to lurk. Oh, 
As we come to a conclusion, and after visiting the chase for a second time, I can say for sure that something strange is going on in my area. And for what we know, somewhere in the flora and fauna of the chase, a creature walks upright. And the best advice you may ever get is don't go out at night.